speak, and I don't want to prolong the time, and I'm not going to be before you long, but I just want to encourage someone on today that may be going through, that may be battling, that the Lord will make a way somehow. The Lord will make a way somehow. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, in this walk of life that we are living in now, perilous times are at every hand. Yes. Yes. And some of us seem to not really understand what's going on, but I'm here to tell you that the Bible is showing itself every day. Amen. The prophecy is most certainly being fulfilled in the time it is at hand. But whatever, however much time that we have left here, we still may face some obstacles, we still may face some trials, we still are going to go through some things. The scripture said there are going to be times when men won't receive sound doctrine, where they're going to become lovers of themselves. And if you ain't paying attention, everybody is out for self. I know it's going to be quiet. Nobody going to talk to me. And it's sad because it's even still that way in the church. But I stopped by just to encourage you that, listen, this ain't nothing that ain't happened before. God understood this and he knew this. That's why he wrote it in his word. Because we also understand that God's word is the only thing that can't come back for. If he said it, he going to do it. If he said it, it's going to happen. But I also know if he said it and he said it's going to do it and it's going to happen, I also know he's going to bring us through. We look at everything from our political state all the way down to even the, the, the bills at our home. And it seems like everything is just in turmoil. The devil is on his job. Yeah. He said, I come to kill, steal, yeah. and destroy. Yeah. And that's exactly what he's doing. Right. He's trying to kill anybody who's trying to serve God. Right. He's trying to steal your joy while he comes to disturb, while you're trying to serve God. Right. And you got to understand that what you must understand that the devil don't have no power over the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Say that again. The devil don't have no power over the servant. He got to get permission from God before he can do anything from you. How do you know? Let me ask you a question. When they started talking about Job, what did the devil say? You got a hedge of protection around him. If you move the hedge, I know he'll surely denounce you. See, he had to get permission before he could lay a finger on Job. You just like Job. He got to get permission before he can do anything to you. Even those of us who are not in the ark of singing that don't even understand, God still got a hedge of protection around you. But it's only a certain for a little while until you get to the point where, okay, you just so dumb that I'm not just not gonna listen. You're gonna move that protection. Then you wonder why you're catching so much hell in your life. Sometimes God got to do some things to get your attention. Then he got to do some things to keep your attention. Amen. God ain't talking. Yes, yes. See, Christian, Christians get a chance to get comfortable. Yeah. When we think everything going good and everything smooth yeah. and we got everything holy, 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 we get comfortable. Yeah. And we forget where God brought us from. Yeah. We forget what God brought us to. Yeah. We come to church and we can sit down, but when, when we was in trouble, you can beat us running around the church. Y'all yeah. ain't talking in here. But I understand that trials and tribulation come to make us strong. But there are certain times when things get so heavy and our burdens get so heavy that we just feel like we have no way out. And there's no way that we're going to make it. I just want to encourage you on today that the Lord will make a way somehow. Is there anybody in here that said, I, I remember when I was in a position and my back was against the wall and I couldn't depend on nobody and everybody who I called on turned their back on me. But when God stepped in, He made a way out of nowhere. Can I get a witness again? 
I had to walk up and say, he's a bridge over troubled waters. Can I get a witness again? He's a roof over my head. He's food when I'm hungry. He's water when I'm thirsty. The Lord will make a way somehow. Can I get a witness in here? And as I move to this text in Isaiah, and Isaiah had to remind the people that you are very, Israel, you're being very unfaithful. The whole time you've been out here, you've been nothing but complaining. But if we know we was going to be stuck like this, we should have stayed with Pharaoh. Right. And I know I preached this a couple of Sundays back, and the thing that baffled me was, you walked through on dry land. Yeah. And the seas closed up and consumed Pharaoh's arm. Yeah. And you say you want to go back, but there ain't a boat nowhere inside. Yeah. How you going to get back over there? How you, how you, Come on, man. I, 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 and, and, and then the thing that, like I said, most people don't understand, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Yeah. But where they were going only was supposed to take three days. Yeah. But because of their mindset, yeah. they weren't allowed to move any farther. Yeah. So, so, so here Isaiah reminds them that the Lord is the one that created everything. Yes. Do you not remember when you cried out for food, he made sure you had manna to eat? Mm -hmm. God. Yes. Do you not remember when you said you was hungry, he brought water out of rocks? Y'all don't want to talk to me. I'm preaching the scripture now. So, so here it is. How can you still be complaining? Just because it don't look good. Because I read somewhere in Romans it say for all things that work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Yes, Can I get a witness in here? And he has to break. See, see, sometimes people say, you know, all the time, you know, especially married couple, all the married folks, especially we got people that been married a long time. And every day it always been Sunday and pictures and cream over some tic tacs and arguments. And if somebody quick to say, well, don't be throwing up in my face what you did for me. But every now and then, you have to be reminded of what was done for you. Can I get a witness in here? Here we are, God has delivered you out of slavery. But here you are still complaining because about what you got to go through to get something that was already promised to you. Y'all missed that. The promised land was already promised to them. But they were complaining about what they had to go through to get to what was promised to you. I stopped by to encourage you, don't give out before you make it to the promised land. If you can just hold on to God's unchanging hand and understand that I may have to go through but my blessing is on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about yeah. Some of us don't understand that the, the, the things we go through, uh -huh. it ain't about us. Right. It's for us to be a witness and a testimony to somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Along this busy walk of life, we're going to run into somebody that be facing something that we have faced. Yeah. Can I get a witness in here? Yes. The blind can't lead the blind. You gotta be able to have gone through something to be able to testify about the goodness of Jesus. How can you testify to somebody when you've never faced harm? How can you testify to somebody when you've never faced sickness or you've never known what it felt like to lose someone that you love so much? How can you be a testimony to somebody? How can you say the Lord will make a way if you ain't never been in a situation for him to make a way? But what we must understand, even though he reminded us of what he did for us, he said, I want you to remember not the former things. Can I get a witness in here? So what he's trying to tell you is, 
Forget about what you went through. Forget about what you're going through. Because I'm about to do a new thing. Is there anybody in here that said once I forgot about my problems and I begin to praise God in the midst of my circumstances? The Lord made a way out of nowhere. Is there anybody in here that said I praised Him in the midst of my being blessed? Friday Eve, 
of that graduation. Sister Alice got down on her knees. And the Spirit of the Lord said, early on, I want you to show up to the train station. And I want you to get on the train and take your seat. Well, Sister Alice got up early in the morning. And she made her way down to the train station. And she went there and she sat in a seat. Well, that old train marshal came around checking tickets. Sister Alice didn't have no ticket. He said, ma'am, I'm sorry, but I'm going to need you to get off this train. She pleaded and she backed him. And she explained the situation. He said, well, ma'am, let me, let me talk to the conductor. Let me see what I can do. He came back with the conductor and two other men. And they said, ma'am, we understand the situation. But we can't allow you to travel if you don't pay. So they escorted Sister Alice off the train. And a lot of people would think that Sister Alice would have started crying. And she would have broke down. But let me tell you what Sister Alice did. Right there on our old concrete. Sister Alice got down on her knees. And when the conductor screamed across the car, all the boat, he charged up the train. He loosed the brakes. And he pulled the whistle. But the train would not move.
says when you know to learn understanding so that means when you know right from wrong and you continue to do wrong regardless of what age you is you are sinning against God yeah ain't nobody gonna clap for that but that's the truth that's the word 
We got to stop trying to scare our children with cliches and tradition and tell them the truth. The truth is the only thing that's going to last. When everything else fades away, God's word will always be here. So now I'm going to ask all the deacons to come.